Hey, it's Justin Kanoy, a DJ, business coach, and idea sharer with another virtual DJ quick tip all about labeling cue points. By default, when we create cue points on our music files, they are given a generic label, Q1, 2, 3, and so on. Now, other than indicating how many cue points we've added to a song, labeling with numbers doesn't really tell us much else. Proper labeling of cue points can provide helpful information that can improve our performances, our mixes, and make DJing easier. Now, before I get into labeling within VDJ, let's just take a quick look at the history behind this. See, when DJing was solely done with records, without computers, DJs actually did have a system of labeling cue points. See, back then, legends like Grandmaster Flash would take a piece of tape and apply it to the section of a song where the breakbeat would come in. This marker, or label, was the inception of labeling a cue point. In addition to labeling breakbeats, DJs would also mark the first beat of the song so they wouldn't have to waste time looking for that point every single time they went to queue up the record. Now, labeling vinyl could only go so far. I mean, there's only so many little pieces of tape you could slap on a record. And that's where digital gives DJs today so much flexibility. At the very least, I like to label the first beat of the song. And then I might also label a breakbeat section, a chorus, a bridge, or the outro. But there are some other ways I use labels to help me when I'm mixing. So let's take a look. I've gone ahead and loaded a song already, and it's in this deck one. So there's the first beat and I'm gonna hit control one, which is the shortcut to set a cue point. So I'll delete that. You can also just click in this area right here. So there's a few different ways that you can set your cue point. And since of course we're talking about labeling, let's label this as the first beat. To this section right here, right click, get this little window, and then we can just type in first beat. If you're in the performance layout and you're not seeing these hot cues, Click on this button right here and make sure that the hot cues is checked and it will display. Now when you're labeling your cue points, make sure to click in this area and not on the number itself. So right in here. Clicking on the number will just play back the song. So you want to make sure you are right clicking right in this spot. Also make sure you don't click down in the pad section. Clicking on the pad will, of course, start the playback. And then right clicking will actually delete the cue point, which is kind of a bummer because then you gotta restart it. I'll just show you. See if I right click, it just went away. And there is a second way to label cue points and that's going into the POI editor. So let's actually go in. I'm just gonna set a whole bunch of random cue points in this song. We'll just do one here and then one here. I'll go into the POI editor and now I'll just click on Q1. We'll call this, even though it's not the first beat, <laughs> this one we'll call it the chorus, chorus, and this one, the break. So now we can see our three labels right here. And what's nice is that it shows up within the song waveform as well. So you can see it in a few different areas. In addition to labeling that first beat, I like to add how many beats there are until the verse starts. I usually won't do this on radio edits since those songs typically won't have long intros, but on remixes and DJ edits that tend to have 16 or 32 beat intros, I'll note that information on the label. Now I'll show you a couple of examples. In this Catch Me I'm Falling edit, the cue points I've set are the first beat intro, the beginning of the first verse, the chorus, and the outro. Since the intro is 32 beats, I labeled it intro 32. Another example is this Lean On remix, also a DJ edit. And I've set five cue points. On this song, I indicated the 32 beat intro, the verse, a percussion break that I really like to use when mixing, and two different outros. Using these labels is a helpful visual indicator to remind me of options that I have available. And this is especially helpful when I'm in the middle of a mix and there are a lot of things going through my head. So let me show you an example. I've got a couple songs here. Now we know that the outro is 64 beats because that's what we have labeled. And we know that the intro of this is 64 beats. And so when we get to the end of holding anchor in deck A, we'll obviously see that it's faded out or it's ending. It looks like it's a bit of a cold ending. And then I've labeled Q.2 as the verse. So the verse Q point label will show up right when that first song is ending. So let's see how this works. I'm just doing this in my trackpad. Okay, 
So we're about a half ways. First 32 beats. And we can see here's the verses coming up right when the other song's ending. So there you go. A real simple mix that I didn't need to think too hard because I just followed along with my labeling. If you like this video or found it helpful, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to this channel for more virtual DJ tips just like this. Thank you for watching. I'm DJ Justin Kanoya, and I'll see you next time online.